Well, thank you, everybody. Welcome. We, uh, we have the future in our hands. Uh, I'm very clear on that. A lot of ages, all ages. So I hope today gives you some tips and some comfort and strategies uh, working with both your own children and the children we serve professionally. So Triple P, I'm not sure how much you guys know about it. Um, briefly, I should tell you, I also have three children before I jump in. I always forgot. I want to let you know who I am. So uh, my name is Dr. Thompson. I have my background in prenatal and perinatal psychology. I live in the Santa Cruz Mountains. I am married to a teacher. And we have three boys, six, eight, and 13. Uh, all of them had birthdays through COVID, so it's been an interesting process. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love Triple P, and the reason I love it is because it's all inclusive, just meaning it's for everybody. Um, back in the one of my former positions, I was under a federal grant for early intervention, and what always broke my heart is that if children didn't place themselves with a developmental delay or disability, they weren't afforded services. And it just always made me feel sad because I think everybody needs support. You know, parenting is one of the hardest things we do in our lifetime. It's also the most meaningful. And it always slays me that in our nation, you know, to drive a car, you have to not only, you know, get experience behind the wheel, you then take a written exam, and then you actually have to do a field test with an expert and demonstrate your own expertise and understanding of the lay of the land driving a car. But hey, you want to reproduce and make a baby and, and create life? We're just going to let you do that on your own, right? You know, there was no manual for any of us at the hospital. And so what I love about Triple P is it's for everybody. Um, and Michael's right. I've been at the county office of Ed and, and had the, the privilege of having many grandparents walk in um, to, to the sessions and they're there raising children, you know, and there's some things that they like from their childhood and some things that they want to change. And so Triple P is for anyone interested. It's actually been around, it's older than me, I'm 44. I always like to tell people that. It's been around since 1973. But um, Dr. Matthew Sa Sanders, a, a clinical psychologist at the University of Queensland, in Brisbane, Australia, he didn't want to coin or call it Triple P until he had enough evaluation and data behind it. So Triple P didn't become Triple P until the year 2000. And I think that really shows the caliber of this program and the fact that its main purpose is to make parenting easier and more enjoyable and it's for everyone. I just had to be a part of it. All right, so we're going to dive in now. So there are many services that Triple P offers. And if you're interested, after we, you know, talk today at 925, I'm going to stay on the Zoom call. And I would love to share more information about that. Um, but there's seminars, workshops, there's groups, there's one-on-one um, -on -one coaching sessions, up to 10 sessions at a time. And we have all different program variants, those for kiddos with special needs, that's called our Stepping Stones program. We also have, um, it's called uh, Family Transitions. And that program variant is really for uh, families that are going through separation or divorce or reunification. And then we also have this really cool um, healthy eating. And that's for kiddos who have a BMI of 96% or greater. So talk to me afterwards. I'm going to leave my contact information. I am here. So there are the five principles of positive parenting. And these, I like to tell you guys, are the infrastructure of the program. Now, a safe and interesting environment, it's really about having supervision of your kiddos and your teens and tweens and knowing who they're with and that they're safe. Um, a positive learning environment is really around, you know, kids, tweens, teens, they all tend to act out when they're bored. So we always want to be sort of, what are our indoor activities? What are our outdoor activities? We always kind of want to be mindful of having things ready for them to do. Um, I think we can all relate where we get an important phone call maybe from our boss and that's exactly the moment that one of our kiddos decides to have a meltdown or a teenager, you know, gets hurt or, you know, 
there's some crisis that always seems to develop when we're trying to do something, it seems like, uh, work-related, right? We're all working from home and we're parenting and, and we're, you know, homeschooling. Um, so there's a lot going on and activities are really a, a great thing to be mindful of because they keep them occupied and, and frankly, um, there's less uh, room for outbursts. Um, realistic expectations. <laughs> I always like to tell parents, so, you know, what's realistic? Like, let's say you had a 40 hour work week and Johnny, you know, had his 40 hours of school um, or whatever, 35 hours, whatever eight to 220 looks like. Um, is it realistic to go to Safeway and go up and down each aisle at the end of the week? Like if you are tired, right, as the adult in the home, it's really likely your kiddo is tired. So, you know, is it realistic to go and do a 45 minute shopping trip at Safeway on a Friday? And is it realistic for everyone's behavior to be happy? You know, so we really want to, um, I used to say we want to lower our expectations because we're living in COVID. But now I really like to say, let's adjust our expectations because it's not that we're lowering what we want for ourselves or for our children, but we need to make adjustments. We need to be able to negotiate and compromise. And so being realistic, you know, I always think of the holidays too, right? Like how realistic is it to do all this kind of madness and shopping for Christmas or for holiday season and also be working full time or being a stay-at-home mom full-time, you know, so you want to look at how you're feeling and if you can take things off your to-do list and then also taking things off the children's to-do list too. Uh, assertive discipline, you know, I, I, I have to con confess that the majority of people who come to our parenting classes are coming because of discipline and conflict. And I always like to say discipline works best when it's immediate, consistent, and decisive. Decisive just means you have a plan. Uh, immediate is, is a, a good example is you have two kiddos playing a video game and they're starting to escalate and fight. You know if you leave that alone, it's going to get worse. So it's important to be immediate in discipline. And discipline for triple P, I can almost guarantee you 100% from doing this for 10 years. The time out and the quiet time look a lot different. So I'm happy again, you're gonna have my contact information. We can take a deeper dive. Um, but right now I have to get us through some meaty stuff so we can talk about the wellness for ourselves and then for our children and then for the families and students we serve. The fifth and most important, Principle of positive parenting is self-care. That's what we're here to talk about today, right? Is wellness. I have seen self-care implemented in a home every time change the ship's course. Meaning giving parents and families permission, a prescription even, of two to three hours a week of self-care, something that brings you or them joy, really has a lasting impact of how we parent. Because if we are getting our own needs met, re recreationally, romantically, spiritually, physically, mentally, we're able to go with the flow a little bit more. We're gonna be less reactive a lot more. So if you learn nothing else today, <laughs> promise me you'll learn the self-care piece. All right, so COVID hit, Ta -da! we've all been, how many of us by a show of hands have been sheltering in place pretty much from like March 12th? Yeah, fun times. <laughs> I always like to start out by saying breathe. Just breathe. So Matt Sanders, the experts, the founders of Triple P came up with a top 10 parenting tips for parents and caregivers in uncertain times. I have this PDF file and I am ready to share, happy to share. Um, and we don't have time for me to go through all 10 of these parenting tips. And in fact, I picked the last three, tips eight, nine, and 10, 
because they deal with um, self-care and wellness. And that's why we're here today. But I encourage you to read these. And I also would encourage you, if you are a parent and also someone in the schools, you know, a lot of us, I can speak from myself having three kids, I get so many dittos and handouts. And I know I just aged myself, but it's true. I get so many things in their, in their folders and some stuff I read and some stuff I don't. I think it would be such a great idea if you could share one or two each week and really have some kind of discussion or maybe it's an email, but something for families and for parents and adults to read through these top 10 parenting tips in uncertain times. I think it'd be really helpful for them and valuable. All right, so again, we are here to talk about tips eight, tips nine, and tips 10. So eight just talks about how do we help children and teens, tweens, learn to cope with uncertainty and be able to adapt to change. And then we're also gonna talk about taking care of yourself the best that you can. It's not gonna look the same as it did before COVID. When we had this sort of luxury of, of taking our children to a school site and then being with our own thoughts and our adult time. We don't have that right now. And I know as a parent too, it sometimes Sometimes it takes my breath away just imagining that I am going to be with my children 24-7 from March through August or September because we don't exactly know how this is all going to land. So when we say self-care, we're going to have to get creative. And we'll spend some time today talking about that as a group because we learn through each other and from each other. And the last tip is just the constant need to reach out and connect with loved ones and with friends. I call it my lifeline. Um, I'm sure all of you have been taking walks more, whether it's a walk from your kitchen to your dining room or a walk around the block, <laughs> but having that phone and being able to call someone that you care for, it can really, really have a positive impact on your day. All right. So helping in children helping our children and teens learn to cope with uncertainty. Now, part of me wants to ask what your experience has been. You know, have you had time to sit down and ask them, what have you heard about COVID? You know, or how are you feeling right now? Like teenagers and tweens, especially, I think about this because they have the cognition, they have the ability to talk about how are they feeling? And I think it's also really important to use this time because we've been given the gift of time to figure out what new skills we would like to teach them. Triple P is a big advocate for doing a lot of work up front and then getting chill time later on in life. And so what that means is, okay, I'll be revealing I have a 13 year old. It's time for him to learn how to do his laundry. I don't know if I'll ever have time, this much time, <laughs> to explain to him whites and darks and where this pod goes and how if you use too many pods, you're gonna ruin all your clothes and maybe you should stick to liquid. I mean, all those little intricacies of life, we now have the time to teach. Um, for those learning how to drive, you know, teaching them about car maintenance, really important. How do we fill up our tanks? How do we check our oil? Why do we even check for water? How do we check how much water is in a car? And it goes on, you know, little kids, six, seven, and eight, teaching them how to make themselves a bowl of cereal, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, um, how to uh, feed their dog. So these, you might look at them as chores, but it's really important because these are actually life skills. And right now in our life, we have the time to teach new skills. It's a great time to do it, right? Learn how to bake the perfect snickerdoodle. You probably have a lot of the ingredients right now and you didn't know. So 
Another way that we help kiddos, children, and teens learn to cope with uncertainty and adapt to changes is by telling them stories. Children love to hear about what it was like for you. So, you know, I'm 44, I've already revealed that. I can talk to my teen about being 13. I can talk to him about a really hard time in my life and what it looked like and how I managed to wake up every day and brush my teeth and tie my shoes and get out the door. We have the ability now to really participate and be present in their life. We really can't do that though if we haven't had any self-care. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep weaving that through, right? Because we've got to have some kind of a break and we've got to have some kind of um, downtime. Would anyone else like to share um, how they've been coping with uncertainty and how they have been helping their teen, tween, or children adapt to these changes? I'm just very transparent with my kids. I let them know what's going on. If they have questions, I talk to them about it. Um, my little one, I mean, of course, I don't tell him everything because he's only six, but my 13 year old, um, he asks a million questions and is always sending me like texts or different videos of conspiracy theories and all of this. And I just have to like talk to him about it and just tell him, you know, this is what is known. Um, things aren't for sure, you know, there's a lot of still uncertainty about the future and just keeping it honest with him. And I think that he appreciates that. And I notice that he's not as anxious if I don't show myself being anxious. If I'm just honest with him, open, and I am I look calm while doing so, it, I think that I haven't noticed him stressing out or, you know, withdrawing any panic attacks, anxiety, any type of thing like that. He's just, he's actually more open now to asking questions if than ever before. So it's good. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So tip nine is really around taking care of yourself the best that you can. And what I like to say almost every day is every moment can feel like a mixed bag of emotions. So feeling anxious, depressed, confused. That's sort of the norm now is having these, these, these moments, whether they're fleeting or they stick around. I mean, I know a lot of colleagues who have had uh, job furloughs, uh, layoffs, and there's a lot of stress. Uh, the media is, is wow, you know? Um, so it's very natural to have very strong emotions. And right now, we are making history. We are living in an unprecedented time. And taking care of yourself and your well being will make parenting easier and more enjoyable. And so that's really the crux of what I want to talk about today is how, how do we have fun <laughs> at home with a bunch of kids? Or how do we have fun when we go back into a virtual classroom or a distance learning hybrid model? You know, I revealed my husband's a teacher and, for a middle school. And so as a teacher, they're kind of preparing for all situations. Um, all right, so some basic self-care strategies. All right, how many of us have lived through a trauma in our lifetime? Yeah, so it, I'm always amazed at what happens when humankind goes through a traumatic experience and I find myself that I'm able to identify it because me even myself no matter how much you know living through it is different than studying it and how many of us have had days where we've gone hours and we haven't had anything to eat or we haven't drank any water that day um, notice that that is a physiological 
identifier that you're stressed out. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for having some water right now, okay? We have to support one another and, and drink water. You reminded me right then. When I was thirsty, I didn't know it. <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting to me to look at my own reflection on, am I drinking water? Am I eating? Am I sleeping? Those are our three most basic premise for being alive, let alone being present. So we have to remind ourselves, even if we need to put a post-it up, on a bathroom mirror or posted up in a car. Did you drink water today? It's so basic and yet it's so critical. Uh, I know uh, a lot of families have confided that they have been working from home, working at the office, and then parenting um, and being a homeschool teacher at the same time. And they have gone a whole day, you know, you're, you're in your pajamas, so you're not really training your body like, oh, it's wake up time, so now I pack my lunch, I get my water bottle, I get my water in there, I leave the house, I drop the kids off. That whole routine is gone. And so part of Triple P is to always be thinking about our routines. Children thrive when things are familiar. They feel safe and secure when they have a routine because they know what's going to happen next. And if you think about it, if you think about the other spectrum of life, right? Being a senior, what's so, so vital for them is their routine. How many of us have older parents who are still alive and man, if it's Tuesday, that's the day they get their hair curled. Or if it's Thursday, that's the day they clean their house. And it is like, it is like a schedule. You don't even have to wonder where they are. If you know them, they have a very strict routine. And it's because that is what gives them comfort. They feel secure. They know what's going to happen next. And so our routine as adults and children and as working professionals has completely changed. And I think that has something to do with the fact that we forget to drink water. We forget to eat breakfast or lunch. Um, hygiene's another one that's kind of, it's funny to me because I was, you know, getting ready today and I was like, oh man, I got to put on mascara and, you know, but, but we haven't, we haven't had to do all this, um, what we would normally do to leave the house. And so something as simple as putting on your, your work clothes, right? It's really helpful because it triggers that other routine, the routine before COVID. And so the other part of it is the physical health part of it, and that's exercise. So here's the raddest thing about our time right now in our nation is it's summer. So as far as getting outside, we can all check that box, right? Who, who has snow right now in their environment? Or who has um, floods right now? right? I think for the most part, we can all go outside today. We can all take a walk and we can, and we can be mindful during that walk that we're doing our self-care. I think that um, one of my favorite women is uh, Sylvia Brown and she always, she's passed away and you know, anyway, but she always said that, that the most balance you'll feel is when you integrate your physical your mental and your spiritual health. And so I always like to think of that when I'm parenting. Am I integrating physical health, mental health, and spiritual health? The other really great thing if you do live in Santa Cruz County is like 25% of the land here is parks and beaches. So there is lots of playgrounds, if you will, to get outside. And so it's really great to be mindful about going outside getting some fresh air, some vitamin D in your sunshine, and then there's sleep. 
So they're all connected, right? Because if you're just doing this all day long, which I know we have felt like it, how many of us are just zoomed out? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're zoomed out. I know, I feel like I look at this little camera and I'm like, hi, it's like my new friend, but it's, it's yeah, it's not, it's not three dimensional. But anyway, we're spending so much time on our Zoom and on our computer screens, we're not getting our heart rates up. We're not pumping ourselves with blood and breath from exercising. And I, I know that that plays a critical role on our sleep. So now you have our sleep's kind of not going well, our exercise isn't going well. Maybe we're not eating or drinking water well like we used to. I mean, all of these can lead to having negative self thoughts. And that's the next thing. You really want to pay attention to your own emotions and thoughts and be super mindful of negative self-talk. So I love saying this too shall pass. That's something that grounds me right away. Um, I know another good friend of mine um, says, I'm just taking it one hour at a time. And I thought, wow, that was deep. You know, I said, Stacey, how are you doing? You know, his wife's pregnant. He has a two-year-old and he has a four-year-old and he's doing computer stuff all day long. And I can hear all the kids running around rampant. And I know she's tired because she's due any moment. And I said, Stacey, how are you doing today? I, I, I mean, Heather, sometimes I take it one minute at a time. <laughs> you know, and I thought, okay. One hour at a time, one day, you know, every moment's a mixed bag of emotions. Anyone else have some coping uh, statements that they can share? <laughs> During a difficult time, a friend told me, never underestimate the power of getting through the day. And I have said that to myself many times over the years, just, I got through the day, success. Absolutely. Well done. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of self care strategies. So taking a break. Right, I like to call these a parental timeout or I need some time by myself. Um, if you can take a walk. Uh, I have a lot of friends and colleagues that have little ones, so they can't leave the little ones behind. So they'll sit in the bathroom and they'll lock the door. You know, you have to be safe. So you have to think about what's safe for the children and safe for you. We already talked about calling someone. Um, other ways though, to take a break in the moment, I've been told uh, a good strategy and, and one that we live, use at home is to turn on some music. Give them time for a dance party. And maybe once they feel like they're, they're having fun, either join or take that time to go just breathe. I've had some families share with me that they have a, a closet that's big enough and they like dark spaces. So they'll just go sit in their closet for a moment or they'll even lay down and put something over their face so it appears dark. But there's all different creative ways that we can take a break. How many of us by a show of hands are starting to do what's called social bubbling? Meaning maybe your family and one other family, you've all had your philosophy talk on where you've been for the last 90 days and you've decided it's okay for your family and that family to hang out together, but you're not gonna hang out with anyone else. How many of you are starting to social bubble? Amen. You know what's rad about social bubbling? It's taking turns, <laughs> trading. <laughs> I remember I specifically reached out to a girlfriend of mine and said, I need a mental health day. Can you take my kids? I'll do two hours, you do two hours. It was rad. The thing is, is everybody wants to do this now. <laughs> so, you know, let's go back to the old days where we had neighborhoods and it really was a village to raise our kids together. Let's do some trades if we can. Let's figure out ways that we can support and love one another as adults.
So there are many self-care strategies, some that were covered this morning. I loved the vagal nerve breathing where you breathe in four seconds. Hold. And then release eight seconds. How many of you guys have heard of the app called Headspace? It's a great mindfulness tool. It's on the phone. It's free if you've been laid off. And it has amazing meditation. Two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, beginner, advanced. I just tried it out over the weekend and I was blown away. I think my dog really likes it too. <laughs> I noticed my dog was really calming down. So Headspace is a great app. There's tons of uh, churches and religions that are doing, um, you know, Zoom or virtual or uh, YouTube channels. There's just so much out there. We just have to go find what we need. But it's out there. And a lot of it's free. You know, so deep breathing, spirituality, exercise, the ability to be mindful. You know, we have a, a ministry uh, out in SoCal called Inner Light. And this reverend has um, put everything on Facebook. It's like a, you can watch it like a live stream. I believe all the churches have started to do that because we, we need each other. We need to connect. Art, painting, good old Plato. I remember I, sometimes I, I save the Christmas gifts they get because I think, oh, they don't need them all at once anyway. And so I found a bag of stuff and it was like, you know, how to make a, a hamburger with Play-Doh. And hey, I like Play-Doh myself. You know, it's, it's creative. It's, it's got some art. Music. Right? We talked about the dance parties. Cooking. Talked about if we want to make snickerdoodles or teach the kiddos how to make a peanut butter and jelly. Some cereal. Something as simple as washing fruit before you eat it. We've been given the gift of time. So how can we build more independence in our children and our teens and tweens to make our lives ultimately easier? It's work up front, you're right. You know, putting that chore board up, assigning the different days and tasks, that is work. But that's work up front. You know, in the end, they're going to be that much more independent. And they're going to take care of that many more chores in the home. And they're going to feel good about themselves too. All right. So as far as self-care, uh, what are some of your self-care strategies during COVID? Um, what's working for you? What feels hard? You're welcome to chat. Raise your hand. I see we're at 1018. So we're doing pretty good. Anyone want to share some self-care strategies that they've been successful using during COVID? Um, I've been putting on my Google calendar because that's kind of what we're all using to kind of, you know, stay in tune with what everybody is doing during the day my lunchtime at the same time every day and I usually have lunch with my family and my husband and then we take a walk during um, my lunch break because I feel like with all the zoom meetings and all of that it's such an important time to like schedule for yourself to have some kind of like something to look forward to I think <laughs> midday awesome I've been doing a lot of um, like FaceTime videos with people that I'm close to friends. We also joined this, it's called House Party App. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of been like playing games virtually with one another and staying connected like that. And the games are just hilarious and fun. So um, just finding different ways to virtually connect with people. And that's been good. Thank you. Anyone wants to share what's hard about doing self-care during COVID? 
any ways that we could help? I think just the everything converted into virtual and so the load of Zoom, literally, I know everyone has complained about that, but we started providing um, weekly sessions to our school districts. We serve over 32 school districts mm -hmm. and um, just preparing for those and being on those took so much more time than anything ever had. So just the amount of time needing to be on the computer was too much. Mm -hmm. I think what's been hard is like through work of not being because we were still working and providing um, ERM services to our students, so mental health related counseling. And um, it was hard just being able, a lot of times they were having difficulties with connecting or, um, you know, getting their devices to work. So being able to work with them and things were very stressful. A lot of them were having crisis situations to where. I've been getting calls on like Saturdays or very late during the weekend because they have no one and they have no one to be there and support them. So in terms of work, I think that it's been, it has caused a lot of um, difficulty for me because I have two children too and they're here and I'm locked in a room while they're you know trying to figure things out while they're out there. So I think just trying to have a balance. I What I did to kind of help um, mediate that a little bit was that I would schedule like an hour long session with the student knowing that my session would really only be 30 to 40 minutes so that I can have a little break in between to go and be present with my kids and stuff. So I think that that really helped. But then you have all of those other times where crisis situations have come up and it's taken a lot of time. Um, but luckily they get along very well and they kind of have been you know, together and I've had a sister help me, you know, kind of um, watch them at times too, so that they can be entertained and they love hanging out with her, doing their learning, um, their distance learning was difficult trying to manage that. So I think that there's just a lot, even as like working professionals, you know, with kids and still working and things. So, but just trying to balance it all has been, it has been hard. I'm not going to say it's been easy. It's still hard, <laughs> but it's getting better. Thank you for sharing. I think that the amount of time it takes to get things done as as opposed to when you're all in the same building and all in the same office, I think that has been the biggest challenge too is um, trying to plan all, we're six through 12, so trying to plan all of the end of the year events where it's mostly communication through emails and Zoom meetings where before you could just pop into someone's office and be like, hey, what do you think about this? Um, I think that has been, and for those of us who are, um, you know, social butterflies who do like the interaction with others, uh, coworkers, and it's been really challenging to not have that. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you for sharing. Heather, I, I would just add to the, um, sorry, what, Ra what Raquel just mentioned. When Ronnie spoke, you know, he, the first thing he led off with was that, you know, we need sort of a tuned human emotional sort of connection or resonance. And I, I have found it harder. I think we're doing it a little bit right now, but I found it harder to do that via Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's, you know, if you're eating, you want to turn your video off. Sometimes you're tired. You know, I just, it's a whole different thing than really sitting with someone in a physical space and being able to understand where they are and connect with them and have just a check-in conversation. I think you can do it, but it, Seems like it takes twice as much effort and that's the biggest. I'm actually here in my office, as you can tell. Um, so I have, and I, just for you guys, second time in three months, I wore a sports coat. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and so the routine's been okay. Yeah, I went to dress up. Um, but but um, but there's often, it's, it's totally empty here. And I come here because my internet is so bad. If I don't do the Zoom this way, if I have to engage, it buffers and delays and it's not worth the effort. So that's why I do it. So I have that routine part, but I don't have the people part. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, that's just what I've missed a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, thank you for sharing. We're at 1024. So let's get through the last three slides. Um, but I also would want to encourage, you know, I know that as a working professional, I always feel like ambivalent about using sick time or vacation time, but I really think that summer is here and this is the time for you guys to figure out a chunk of space for you to be able to decompress. Whatever that looks like, um, I would just encourage you to 
use some time off. And um, camping is open. Um, there's lots of stuff to do in where we're living and it is uh, quote summer vacation. So I would hope that you guys would take some time for yourselves and your loved ones. Um, so the last tip is really about reaching out and connecting with loved ones. Um, I think a lot of us have touched on that already. And Michael, thank you for acknowledging how much we all miss seeing each other in the office. I, I also resonate with the social butterfly piece. Um, I get a lot of my energy and creativity from people, not through a Zoom. So uh, it is a, a different time and it's, it's, it's a time to really look at yourself and your physical, mental and spiritual health because this is a, a new way of living. And just the one thing I wanted to reflect about, we're right at time is, is there a wellness plan? You know, what would your wellness plan look like once school starts? But then what could you offer the adults and children that you support on a, on a weekly basis? And um, I just want you to reflect on that. I know I've talked to a lot of parents and teachers and being able to negotiate whether they do Seesaw and do online learning versus, you know, have workbooks and they take pictures. Um, I just would like to, to offer you to start thinking, I, I'm sure you have, but how do we support wellness once school starts is something else to, to consider and reflect on. Finally, here are some uh, supports and resources. I would love to give you access to this PowerPoint. Um, you know, let's stay connected. Uh, that's our, our job, that's our homework, self-care and staying connected. Um, I have both my cell phone, my email. Also, First Five Santa Cruz County has some amazing array of Triple P services being offered at La Mazana, Community Bridges, and Mountain Community Resources. I thank you. I value you. Have a great day.